We recently introduced a third fundamental principle, the angular momentum principle, that we said focuses on describing changes to rotational motion. Today we're going to describe the meaning of one of the key physical quantities in this principle, the torque. Let's examine this first for the system of a particle of mass m that rotates on a rigid rod of negligible mass. This rod is fixed at one end so that it rotates about an axis we'll label as A. Imagine that some agent in the surroundings applies a force F on the particle as shown. Intuitively, you might expect this force applies a kind of twist to the system. Exactly what that twist is depends not only on the force itself, but also on the choice of axis for the system. The way we connect the axis to the force is by means of the position vector, r sub a vector f, that locates where f is applied relative to the axis a. Notice that once we have this position vector in mind, we can think of f as having two distinct components. One component that is parallel to the position vector, and one component perpendicular. Now since the component f parallel points either directly toward or directly away from the axis, a, it's not possible for this component to apply a twist to our system. You can test this yourself. Try turning a wheel, say a bicycle wheel or the steering wheel of a car, by pushing or pulling directly toward or away from the center of the wheel. So the perpendicular component of F is the only component of F that can apply a twist. We can find the magnitude of this perpendicular component of F using trigonometry. If we know the angle between the vectors F and R sub A F, let's call that angle theta. Then the magnitude of the perpendicular component of F is equal to the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle theta. Now even with the magnitude of this perpendicular component of F in hand, we still haven't completely specified the magnitude of the twist that can be applied. The same perpendicular component yields a smaller twist if it is applied closer to the axis. Similarly, if you apply this component of F farther from the axis, the twist is larger. You can test this by turning a wheel with the same perpendicular component of F applied either close to or far from the center of a wheel. In effect, the magnitude of the twist is proportional to the distance between the axis and the point where this perpendicular component of F is applied. This distance is simply the magnitude of R sub A F. Putting all this together, we now can describe the magnitude of the twist which is to say the magnitude of the torque due to F applied to our system. It's the product of the magnitude of the perpendicular component of F, F perp, and R sub A F. We symbolize the torque magnitude using the Greek letter tau. The dimensions of torque are the dimensions of force times a length with corresponding SI units of a Newton meter. Notice that in giving a physical description of the torque magnitude, we associated the trigonometric function sine theta with the magnitude of F. However, we could also just rearrange these terms to associate the sine theta term with the magnitude of the position vector that locates where the force F is applied relative to the axis. In other words, let's consider the magnitude of F multiplied by the product of the magnitude of r sub a f and sine theta. This suggests an alternative interpretation for the torque magnitude. Imagine drawing a line parallel to f passing through the point where f is applied to our system. This line is called the line of action. The distance of closest approach of the line of action to the axis, or in other words, the shortest distance from the line of action to the axis is just the magnitude of r sub a f times sine theta. This length is also called the moment arm of f about the axis a. This length is symbolized by r sub perpendicular. So in sum, 
in this alternative view, we can say the magnitude of the torque due to F applied to our system is the product of the magnitude of the force and the moment arm R sub perpendicular. The two ways of thinking about the torque magnitude are equivalent. Applying either method to a rotational motion problem yields the same result. However, we'll find that there are times when, for a given problem, one way is easier to apply than the other. So it's good to be familiar with both ways to express the torque magnitude. Now since torque is a vector, we now need to discuss how to find the direction of this vector. To visualize this, let's start by arranging the arrows representing the vector force F and the position vector R sub A F in such a way that we place the tails of the arrows at the same location. Remember that we don't change the meaning of the vectors if we translate them as long as we don't stretch or shrink their lengths or change their directions. Now as long as the angle theta between the vectors is non-zero, these vectors define a plane. The direction of the torque is perpendicular to this plane. There are two possibilities, either out of the screen, toward us, or into the screen, away from us. There is a rule called the right hand rule which tells us which of these directions is the direction of the torque. First take your right hand with your fingers straight and align your right hand in the direction of the arrow representing R sub A F. Now keeping your fingers straight, orient your palm so that it faces the arrow representing F. You may need to rotate your wrist to do this but make sure you keep your fingers straight and pointing along the direction of R sub A F. Now curl your fingers into a fist while keeping the rest of your hand motionless. Finally stick your thumb straight out from your hand without moving any other part of your hand. The direction your thumb points is the direction of the torque vector. In this particular case we see that the direction of the torque is into the screen away from us. Now this way of determining the direction of the torque may seem a little weird, for after all, it would seem that all the rotating action is happening here in the plane of our screen. So why doesn't a vector quantity like torque have a direction that lies in the same plane? One useful way to think about this is to consider the axis itself. The axis plays a central role for any rotation problem, and it has an orientation that is perpendicular to the rotation plane. So it would seem to make sense to link the orientation of the rotation axis to the direction of vector quantities associated with rotation. One way to help this make more sense is to uncurl your fingers a bit while keeping your thumb pointing in the direction of the torque. The effect of the torque is to twist the system in the direction that the fingertips of your right hand are pointing. In any event, using the right hand rule always takes some practice for anyone who is applying the rule for the first time. So we'll be doing problems where we'll be able to practice this. In fact, here's a clicker question where we can try out the right hand rule. Here's the solution. We see that by sticking the straight fingers of our right hand in the direction of R sub A F, by rotating our wrist to face the palm toward F, and by curling our fingers and sticking our thumb straight out, we see that the direction of the torque is toward us. In closing, let's note here that we have performed a vector operation, a kind of vector multiplication which is called the cross product. Specifically, we can say that the torque is the cross product of the position vector R sub A F with the force vector F, and is written like this. Notice that this operation is a different type of vector multiplication from the dot product the scalar product that we discussed earlier in the context of work. For the scalar product, the product of two vectors results in a number, a scalar. For the cross product, by contrast, the product of the two vectors results in another vector. We described here one way to find both the magnitude and direction of the cross product. Later we'll discuss how to do the cross product when we have vectors expressed in component form. But first, we will introduce and discuss the meaning of the other key rotation quantity in the angular momentum principle, the angular momentum itself. That's the subject of our next lecture.